Good morning, everybody, and a very welcome to this webinar uh, where we will talk about clear invoice design and how to ensure a smooth customer experience. We are very happy that so many wanted to join us this morning, and uh, we will be focusing on how to make the most of the time when you have your customers' full attention. So this is us who will talk about this today. My name is Karin Ramsin. I work in uh, product management and work with both uh, sales cases and product development. And I've been in this business for a very long time. And my focus is the customer experience. And with me today, I have Odd Egil. Thank you, Karin. My name is uh, Odd Egil Urey. I'm a product manager for the multi-channel service. Uh, where we provide to our clients uh, document design and, uh, pr and uh, production, as well as document and invoice distribution and payment. And I also been in this industry for, for a few years. Thank you. Eric. Yeah. Yes, my name is Eric Kenaset, and I work as a UX UI designer uh, here at Theatre Every. And my focus is, of course, also the user experience would be weird otherwise. Yeah. And some practical information. If you do have any questions during this webinar, please use the chat and we will pick up the topics at the end. And if there is a lot of questions, which we, which we of course are hoping for, we will send you re replies afterward. And of course the presentation and other applicable material. And uh, this is the topics that we will cover today. We will talk about invoice design naturally, but also how to what to do to understand your customers better. Are there any methods for that? We will talk about what to do and what not to do. We'll give you some examples about that. And then how important is the personalization? And at the end, we will have the summary and answer any questions that might have occurred. So uh, let's get going. So this year has been a year defined by high costs for consumers. The energy bill is extremely high. The food prices are high. The bank interest rates are continuously increasing. And this means that we as consumers, we are trying to learn more. And we are also comparing our suppliers of recurring services to feel confident that we have really chosen the right ones. It's not only about pricing that makes us choose one supplier before another. It's also related to the customer experience and how we feel that we are treated as customers. And naturally, invoice design is part of the customer experience and you need to be able to deliver this intuitive experience that is clear and to the point. You need to try to be proactive in the dialogue with the customers, like give them ideas and inspiration while you have their attention, because you really do have their attention when they are looking at the invoice and trying to, to see what else tips and tricks and ideas they can get from you as a supplier. And thereby, it's important to do this personalization of contact to, to uh, attract their attention. By doing all of this, you also decrease the pressure on customer service. You can enable the customers to reach customer service in different ways, not just only by phone, which could create a lot of irritation if they can't reach customer service directly. They find themselves being in this phone queue. Uh, there might be other ideas. They can, of course, be chats. So you can have FAQs available and so on. Uh, you should also consider the clear payment offer so that the customer can choose by themselves how they want to pay and also at the same time be in control of their costs. So improve continuously, <clears throat> uh, be actively listening to your customer's feedback and act on it all the time. So basically, when it comes to design, try to keep it simple. And as we all know, that is so much easier said than done. As you know, this expression is normally said, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, but keeping it simple is very, very hard. But the reason to emphasize the importance of keeping the full experience as intuitive as possible is that this will not only help your customers, it will also decrease their need for help from customer service and it will facilitate for you as well 
ensuring that the maintenance is kept down to a minimum. So how do you do that then? Well, the main thing to be able to keep it simple is to understand your audience. What is the general behavior when they read their invoice? How much time do they have on their hands to, to look at the invoice? So focus on finding out your customers' needs, both in general, but also specifically, uh, so they can find the information that they need. But that is not easy. So Eric, what methods can you use to ensure that you can understand your customers better? Well, there are some different ways to do this, uh, but the best and perhaps most obvious is to actually ask them. Uh, in user experience or customer experience, we work methodically to ensure that we solve the right problem for the right user in the right way. Uh, design is more than just drawing layouts. Uh, that's why today I will mainly focus on the first two steps in this uh, picture, uh, emphasize and define, because that's where we get to know our customers and their needs. This is also where we define what problems we actually need to solve, which gives us a why to bring us through with us to, throughout the steps that follow. Uh, usually, the emphasize phase uh, consists of interviews, surveys, and other ways to study your components. Uh, when that is done, we analyze our findings and document our insights to share them with our team. Uh, one good way to do that is personas, uh, uh, as long as they are built on this empirical research. When done right, they're a good way to create empathy for your users and consensus about who they are. Uh, it's also easier to work user-centered when, when you focus on a few personas than whole groups of users. Uh, however, there are some things to take into consideration. Uh, one thing is the purpose of the persona, because there's a there are some differences between a marketing persona and a UX persona. Um, a lot of the time, we tend to put a lot of effort into the looks and demographics of the pers personas, because that makes them feel real, which is good, especially from a marketing perspective. Uh, and when you present it to your stakeholders, uh, though there's a risk that we design the persona for the sake of design. From a UX point of view, a persona like person who is terrified of windowed envelopes is more interesting than what the one that we see here. That's named Nameson from Stockholm, 27 years old, works as a carpenter and likes Xbox. Because the first one points at the needs and behaviors of those people instead of just painting a picture. Uh, and if the most important purpose of the persona is to have my team focus on specific user groups, and uh, the persona could just as well look like this. Just quick and dirty, it's fast and therefore cost efficient. As long as it's based on actual knowledge about our customers and we collectively understand them, this is all good. This way, we'll also be more prone to redo our research regularly, which is important to ensure that we improve continuously. Another way to visualize your customers are user groups. Uh, these are more generic and less specific than personas. Uh, they work well too, but once again, as long as they're based on research. The point is, don't sit by yourself and guess what the customers need. We are the experts of our own product, and therefore we are biased by definition. And that's why this is so important. Get to know your customers for real by actually talking to them. Remember that assumption is the mother of all screw-ups. Another thing that's important to take into consideration is accessibility and inclusive design. This is a huge subject, so we'll only touch upon it briefly. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. Uh, we needed to make our designs available for everyone, regardless of disabilities, being it permanent, temporary, or situational. For example, carrying my baby around gives me the same challenges as having one arm for that period of time. Uh, <clears throat> the foundation of accessible design is that it must be perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. Uh, and this is actually regulated by law. Uh, right now, this applies to the public sector, but as of 2025, these laws will also apply on the private sector. This means that it will actually be illegal to not have an accessible site and your company may be fine. Of course, it's important to obey the law, but the main reason we should make accessible designs is that it makes things better for everyone. To, make us, uh, to help us make digital services in accordance with these laws, there's a set of guidelines called WCAG. Okay, interesting. I must say, I didn't consider this part that you can be considered impaired while walking around with your baby on your arm, but that is very true, of <laughs> course. <laughs> 
So now you, you got some new ideas of how to divide your customers in user groups and understand the target audience better and their general behavior. <clears throat> but what should we consider in addition when approaching the actual invoice design, utilizing the method of keeping it short and simple? Um, Eric, could you give us some examples of bad versus good design, perhaps? Uh, of course, uh, you can say that design is like a joke in a sense. If you need to explain it, it's just no good. Good design is intuitive and gives the user a sense of control and empowerment. But what works depends on who you're designing for. Like I said earlier, you need to find out who your users are and what needs they have. Uh, these are invoices created by a graphic designer who have focused on creating fun designs for themselves without any consideration for the recipient. As you can see, it's quite hard to see the information that I need to pay these invoices. Uh, in the left one, the logo takes all the focus and in the right one, the information drowns in all the graphic elements. Uh, just as like I said in the personas, there's a huge risk when you design for the sake of design. It rarely, rarely works. If we look at the left one uh, from the last picture, uh, this one also has accessibility issues. Uh, good, good contrast between text or interactive components and the background uh, is an important part of making accessible designs. According to the WCAG guidelines, the contrast between text and background must be at the very least 4.5 4 to 1. Uh, we use contrast checking tools to control this because it can be hard to see with the naked eye. In this case, all text misses the target. So not only does the logo take all the focus, if I'm visually impaired, I won't be able to see a thing. Since it can be tricky to test all possible disability scenarios with real users, uh, which we of course would prefer, we use different tools to simulate these scenarios. So let's have a look at what this, like, this looks like in bright sunlight. As you can see, you can hardly see that there's anything there except uh, for the logo. But what happens if we increase the contrast a bit? Uh, here we have adjusted the colors to increase the contrast and you can see the difference in, in the sunlight scenario in the right picture. Now you can actually see that there's something there. Another very common disability that is helped by good contrast is color blindness. Here we see what happens when we don't, don't consider contrast in pie charts, for example. And there's no way for a colorblind person to see the difference between the two fields in the bottom of the chart, the yellow and the light pink one. Uh, instead, we can use different shapes, sizes, and colors to, uh, to illustrate the different parts of this invoice. It's also good to combine, combine the shapes with text labels to further show what's what. Since we've used the same colors in this design, like in the pie charts, uh, it's still hard to see the difference in colors between electricity connection and gas connection, but it still works because we've uh, added labels on them and made the bubbles different sizes and moved them apart. Uh, this is why we need to work with both shapes, colors, and text to communicate. Okay, <clears throat> interesting. I was just thinking while you were presenting, what will the brand department think when you do a bigger contrast between you change basically the color? What would what what would that give? <laughs> You don't need to make major changes there. You usually just need to tweak them a bit. Uh, so you can talk to the brand department and maybe see if they have some print colors and change the uh, the digital colors, the color scheme. Uh, ah, okay. But you just need to tweak it a bit. You don't need to make major changes for this to work. Very interesting. So now we have covered what not to do, and we have also looked at some interesting suggestions of how to use shapes and colors to also ensure that everybody can see different things on the invoice. But what should we do more? Well, firstly, of course, we need to ensure that it's easy to find the most important information, like who is the invoice from, what should be paid and when, and also ensure that the customers understand how they can pay. And when sending out a true digital invoice, and which, which is basically an invoice that adapts to the screen that the customer is taking it up in. So if they look at the invoice on their mobile phone, the invoice will adapt to the screen. 
then it's much more easier to ensure that they have the possibility to choose what they are interested in by expanding or collapsing content. Uh, in this example, the details of the invoice is placed in the tab navigation, ensuring that the consumers easily can find the information that they seek. If you have a digital PDF invoice, which is as flat as a paper, if you take that up in your mobile phone, you need to scroll up and down to find the most important information. Then you could consider to put additional information in extra pages so it's not gets hidden in a basic design. So focus on the most important part, reduce the information overload, use different shapes and colors to emphasize different content. And also for the digital purposes, you can hide information in tabs or expandable drawers. And if it's PDFs you can, or paper invoices, you can put it on additional papers. That is what, ours, what we suggest. Now we need to talk a little bit extra about the payment methods because that is also part of the customer experience and it needs to be both convenient, intuitive and the consumers need to feel secure because the worst that can happen is that your customer feels that they are unsure whether the invoice has been paid or not or even wondering did my money go to the right supplier. And how to do that then? Yeah, let let your consumers choose what how in which way they want to pay, but also share ideas and tips of payment methods they can use if that there is something that they can facilitate your process. So perhaps you can add information about payment status so they directly know whether the invoice has been paid or not. Uh, I used uh, the uh, user group that Eric previously talked about uh, in this context. However, using age as a segmentation parameter can be prejudiced because you can't take for granted that people really act their age, but it could still be a parameter to take into consideration when it comes to payment. So you can cater for several available options so the customers can choose what they feel comfortable with. This will reduce errors and give the customer a sense of security, which is what you really want to ensure. So Eric, there is a lot of things to consider when doing a good invoice design, catering for all different customer needs, being relevant and to the point, as well as ensuring a smooth user experience, including the payments. So can we perhaps provide any help with this if there is people in the audience that feels that, wow, we can't really get a grip of this. We would need some help. What, what would you suggest? I really understand that it feels a bit much. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see, my computer is messing with me a bit. Uh, I understand that it can feel a bit much, uh, but we are experts at this here at Yeto Every. Uh, like I said earlier, we have a lot of methods to help you design the best solution for your customers. And we are more than happy to help you all the way from research in the emphasize phase uh, to making prototypes that we can validate in the test phase in, or in order to fail fast before we even start developing. This way mm. we can iterate to create the best design possible to empower your customers and by that also helping you to get paid on time, which I would consider a real win-win situation. Mm. Fail fast, that is a good, <laughs> that is smart because then you gain a lot of momentum and time. <laughs> it's usually, usually more much cheaper to fail fast than to fail at the last moment. Yeah, exactly. Very good input. So, uh, what about personalization then? We said that we will focus on that as well. And I think all of us, we feel it's important to be treated with a personal touch because it makes us feel valuable and important as customers. We want our suppliers to appreciate us. So what can you do then? Um, you can utilize the possibility to be visioned as a supplier 
cares. You really need to present offers that feels relevant to the recipient. If we take an example from the energy sector, of course, you need to have different approaches to people living in apartments or living in a house. Uh, but there are a lot of other things that you can do. Uh, you can also ask the customer one more time, improve by asking them, is this a good customer experience? What are they missing in their interaction? Are they even able to have an interaction with you as a supplier? Can they ask questions directly to customer service? Can they give you feedback uh, what they like or what they dislike with the experience or what they are missing? So add a personal touch, uh, present offers that feels relevant to each specific person and also include a message just thank you for your for being a customer that could also be highly appreciated. Uh, oh, the Agile, it seems like it, there is a lot of work to segment the customers and ensure that mm. every single person feel important as a customer. How could we handle that without getting stuck in different systems or using different sub suppliers and so forth? Do we have any tips on that? Yes, thank you, Karin. Yeah, yes, we, we can help with that through our communication tool. So this can help our customers to facilitate updating of content to all types of communication through our self-service tool called Interactive. So this tool enables the users to do changes that immediately impact the design, such as text content, pictures and logos and templates. This will give you the possibility to ensure brand guidelines and consistency in communication, regardless of channels. Um, so you can segment on target group or on personalized. Uh, by using this, you can create also your own rules and logic for send outs and personalization. Uh, it will uh, um, make you available, make it possible for you to collect customer input and feedback. So this tool can be used by all departments in your company and facilitating cooperation without having to change already existing systems, processes and short cutting dependencies to IT department and such. By having interactive just added as an overlay, giving better transparency and control of all outgoing communication. With interactive, it's easy to work and you can have different user access rights that can be granted related to specific templates if needed. So some areas like, for example, where the invoice data will be placed can't be edited by the user so that you ensure that no one can add any mistakes to the content that would be in the way of the more important information of the invoice data. So all this is a powerful tool. And, and if you want to know more about this uh, work, just reach out to us and we will get you the information. Okay, very good that we cater for mistakes because we can all make mistakes. <laughs> so it's good that to ensure that nobody can actually put something over the invoice data. So just to uh, summarize this uh, then, a well-designed invoice can help you to stand out from the competition and leave a good impression on your customers. So this is the time of the month when you have your customers full attention. So how can you make the best out of it? Well, the main message that we wanted to convey today is that you need to know and understand your customers. And for that, there are several methods available and we are, of course, happy to help. Um, you can also continuously improve uh, by acting on feedback from your customers. You should consider to keep it short and simple and ensure that the user experience is intuitive as well as accessible for all customers. We have learned a lot about accessibility today, which is awesome. And I think that is the main message for this. Uh, you know, keep it simple. Be sure that you give the most important 
information directly, so you don't give a lot of confusion to the customer where to find information. And I think we have reached the point of the questions. And I saw something here in the chat, so let me see. Uh, how do we choose what method to use? Personas or user groups? Eric, what would you say about that? I would say the most common UX answer ever. Uh, it depends. Uh, <laughs> it, it basically, whatever floats your boat. Uh, what works for you will work. Uh, as long as it's based on research, everything's fine, actually. As long as it makes your team understand your users' needs. That's all that matters. So maybe you could also say that it's good that to use what you have, the information that you have initially, and then build on to it. Would yeah, that yeah be you, the research need to improve continuously as well as yeah. as well as the our services. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another question. What tools do you use to check the color contrast and accessibility? There are quite a few. Uh, easiest way is to Google it, I'd say. Uh, I use, uh, I'm use i using a Mac computer, so I, I use one called Contrasty, uh, just contrast with an E at the end, which is really good. Uh, but you can just Google contrast checker and there will be a bunch of tools because this won't work at PC, for example. So it depends on your um, hardware, I'd say. Mm -hmm. So, but but just Google it. it, it will, you will you will find a bunch of different. And we can also help, right? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, we discussed accessibility, and there is a lot of questions related to that, which I can understand since it's something that will be required by law quite soon. Uh, but what are the some of the most common challenges companies face regarding being compliant with accessibility requirements in the context of invoice design? Um, hard to say one specific, but it's I'd say it's easy. It's most most important to like make accessibility a part of your daily operations. Uh, so not not making like an extra thing that you need to do. Uh, just work that way, but. Contrast is very common that it, it misses the target, for example. Uh, when it comes to digital services, you, you need to, um, if you use a screen reader, for example, if you're blind, um, it's really, really important that the headings, heading, <laughs> headings are uh, semantically correct. Otherwise, I will be all lost in the page. And that's a very usual mistake, I'd say. Uh, but it, it's hard to point at specific um, things. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, I was just thinking, I, I'm guessing here that there is a lot of people in the audience that are thinking so, like, OK, so what should I start with? Uh, do we have any pointers on that? Like how to get started with improving the invoice design? What should you do first? What would be the first step? I would say, like you said, uh, just make it yeah, keep it simple and just front load with the most important. You need to find the, your least interested user, I'd say, or customer and see what do they need to just to pay their bills? What information do they need? Because maybe they don't need all the details in this, and the specifics. And maybe that's an answer for the uh, earlier question as well. Accessibility wise, just the bare basics uh, and you, you should really present that first and really easy to understand. Uh, then the details can be for like the ones with a passionate interest in your product and who really needs to follow every okay. detail. Very good input. So start with the basics and go step by step from there. Take yeah. baby steps if needed. <laughs> so and you can't solve like world peace in a day. So <laughs> you need to take baby steps. All improvement is good improvement. Yeah, very good. Thank you. And thanks to all of you that participated in this uh, webinar. It has been recorded and uh, we will send you the link and the follow up email with the material afterwards. And uh, so thank you very much and we wish you all a good day. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <clears throat>